Welcome back, true believers, and all you spectacular Spidey fans to another really exciting episode of Spider-Man PS4 101. So even though the game has been out for a few weeks now, and we're still anxiously waiting for the incredibly exciting City That Never Sleeps DLC pack, where the first part of it will feature Black Cat with the heist mission, there still is some really exciting news relating to the game's story and its continuation within the world of the Marvel comics. And if you somehow forgot which epic comic I'm talking about, I'm mainly discussing about the continuation of the Spider-Verse event with spider Genin, which will also features Spider-Man PS4 in it. Not only is it amazing to see this iteration of Spider-Man featured within the Marvel comics, but the story is actually technically canon within this game's universe. So obviously, if you're a massive fan of this game like I am, you're definitely going to want to pick this comic up in stores coming out tomorrow on September 26th. But don't worry everybody, if you're not able to wait that long or pick up the comic yourself, Marvel has provided the first five panels of spider in number zero, introducing Spider-Man PS4 within the Marvel Comics universe. Universe. And in this video, I'll pretty much overview the first five panels of the comic and discuss about what's happening in the story, but you can read these individual panels yourself if you want to by pausing the video. So as I just mentioned, spider in number zero takes place after the main narrative of Spider-Man PS4, which means it's technically an epilogue to the game's story. But as we see in this first panel, it's just another day in the life of your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man where you see Peter in his awesome advanced suit swinging through New York City while listening to Just the Facts with J. Jonah Jameson, and after he decides to stop listening to the podcast, he receives a call from Mary Jane Watson. MJ calls Peter to let him know that there's a maniac in a spider-like costume causing havoc in the financial district of New York City. It turns out that this particular villain is actually this universe's iteration of the Tarantula, who actually has a whole mechanized suit featuring tons of weapons to take out Spidey with. This includes a whole arsenal of weapons like spider-like legs, metal blades coming out of his wrists, a flamethrower, claws, guns, and much more. We then see Spidey attempt to take out Tarantula by using his electric webbing, but then it doesn't work on him since his suit is insulated, so instead he easily wraps him up using a web bomb. And just when Spidey was about to punch Tarantula's lights out, Superior Spider-Man appears from a dimensional rift and tells Insomniac Spidey that he needs his help. And after all that epicness, that is where the preview of Spider-Geddon number zero ends. So after looking at this preview, I am absolutely in love with this Spider-Geddon narrative so far, and I can't wait to see how the rest of the story will turn out with the excellent writing from Christos Gage and also the great art style that this comic has. Plus, for those of you who have beaten the game, it's going to be really interesting to see how Superior Spider-Man and Insomniac Spider-Man are going to interact with each other given the certain circumstances after you beat the game. Now, even though he seemed like a one-off villain just for this little preview, I'm still going to give you guys a background as to who Tarantula is in the comics and who seemingly this iteration of the character is as well. So, for those of you who don't know, Tarantula debuted all the way back in July of 1974 under the creators of Gary Conway and Ross Andrew. Tarantula began with Anton Miguel Rodriguez, who was a terrorist from the South American country of Del Vadia. The character was recruited by the government's dictator supporters who gifted him the identity of the Tarantula to spread fascist ideas. Anton brings his alter ego to the United States to cause a stir, and it's in there that the man picks fights with Spider-Man and Captain America in turn. And as another fun fact of this preview goes, Superior Spider-Man says to the Insomniac Spider-Man that he is actually from Earth-1048. And as you should all know, almost every alternate universe from the Marvel comics has a specific number attached to the end of it, like Earth-616, and now this universe with Earth-1048. But it's also very interesting because Isabel Hsu, who is the assistant creative manager for Marvel Games, has actually said that there is definitely a significance to Spider-Man PS4's universe designation of Earth-1048. And even though I personally have no idea why this specific universe is called Earth-1048, please let me know if you have any guesses as to why this is in the comments section down below. But even after that really exciting preview, there still is a sneak peek of what's to come with the upcoming issues with an interview with Christos Gage. So Marvel posted on their website with a recent article stating writer Christos Gage promises an important character journey in Spider-Geddon number zero. Gage discusses telling Spidey's story across the hit video game and crossover comics. On Wednesday, September 26th, the story that began in Marvel's Spider-Man for PS4 continues in Spider-Geddon number zero, kicking off a huge Spidey comics event that will rock the entire Spider-Verse. Marvel.com spoke to writer Christos Gage about crafting this story for both the blockbuster video game and the comics. So Marvel first asked Christos what was it like to collaborate with video game makers to write a comic and a video game story. And Christos replied by saying, it was great. I've been working with Insomniac and Marvel games for the past three years on the game, obviously, so this was a logical extension. Everyone was incredibly excited and supportive and really helped out with things like approving Tarantula as a villain who we haven't seen in the game universe 
first yet. And Marvel continued by asking, Spider-Geddon is just the beginning of a huge spider event. How did you approach writing a story like this? And Christos responded by saying, I had the good fortune of Dan Slott having contributed some very cool ideas and from there it was a matter of trusting the Spidey office and deciding how to put it all together. We wanted this to be an important character journey for several characters and also have the multi-dimensional fun of Spider-Verse with all those crazy variant spiders. Hopefully we managed to do it all. And Marvel continued the interview by saying the game has been a massive hit with fans as if it's a true part of the entire Spidey experience. And of course it is because now there's a five part series of comics coming right from it and more. Had you ever taken part in something that crossed different forms of media like this before? And Christo said I've done adaptations before and prequels or sequels to games in comic book form. I've also done sequels to TV shows and comics but nothing quite like this where I worked on a character in one medium which would be video games directly continued that story in another medium which would be comics and knew that the story we are telling will affect the original medium. It's pretty awesome and I think something we should see more of. And Marvel closed this interview by asking what can you share about Spider-Geddon number zero that fans didn't get from the game. And Christo said now that the big villain of the game is widely known savvy readers realize they will be seeing Spidey of the video game universe meet up with a parallel world version of his mentor turned enemy but who is presenting himself as a hero. There are all kinds of juicy story elements in that don't you think? And in my opinion I absolutely agree with what Christos is saying here because I can't wait to see Superior Spider-Man and Insomniac Spider-Man interact with each other in the continuing issues of Spider-Geddon. And given what we've already seen so far from these first five panels I can't wait to see what's gonna come next. But anyways guys that was all the news I have for you today relating to Spider-Man PS4's involvement in Spider-Geddon. Please let me know all your thoughts in the comments section down below and what did you think of this preview. Like I said I'm loving the art style and the writing that this comic has and I just can't wait to see more of it hopefully coming soon. But anyways guys thank you all so much for watching. Stay spectacular Spidey fans. Peace out. Such a disappointment. Parker. You knew? I tried to warn you, Peter, but you didn't listen. You knew? I won't let you win. <laughs> This means too much to me! Not more than it means to me! <laughs>